all rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can I ask everybody to just stand for a moment of silence? We lost uh, Anthony Moranti this month. Um, he was a former town board member, planning board member, zoning board member, um, mentor, and uh, certainly was always an honest opinion for everybody. So, moment of silence. In uh, Vietnam, that too. And, uh, yes. Thank you. Welcome to the July 11th meeting of the Phillipstown Town Board. We're gonna start with a public hearing for a local law to repeal the residency requirement for the Office of Town Comptroller. Um, just for a little explanation, at the end of 2023, um, the uh, Ann McGrath, Ann McGrath, listen to me, Ann Gallagher, she was Ann McGrath, Ann Gallagher retired, and instead of replacing her with another full-time position, we switched Susan Kenny, who was comptroller, into my office. So she's going to be the clerk for the supervisor. And we brought in uh, Kevin McKeon, who is the town accountant, to act as the comptroller. So to tidy up things, Steve, we need to, Kevin is not a resident of the town of Phillipstown, so we need to uh, remove that clause from the, um, the portion of the uh, town code that the um, comptroller is a resident of the town of Phillipstown. Is just for Kevin's benefit. It, it increases the pool of, of qualified people who you can draw as correct. And, and Kevin is well qualified. Oh no, he yes. is. I'm just saying it isn't just special. Understood. For him. Yes. Thank you. So, uh, any comments from the board? No, just Kevin. He's not here every day, though, right? He's, he's, he's not. not. No, he's, he's, he's a here kind of a part-time basis, yes. right? Yes. Okay. I think Kevin is not only well qualified, but is familiar with the town of Phillipstown. Sure. Has been um, of assistance in the past, so. Thank you. It's very helpful to have this yeah. option. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a very nice guy, too. He knows exactly what he needs to get done. Anything from the public? Is there a mandatory time we need to keep it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, and we did have a last minute addition to the um, agenda. The yes, but one second. So we will do the. Um, a resolution to adopt this once if everybody is content with that any other comments we're all good yeah. no okay yeah. so can I get a motion to close the public hearing so moved second second all in favor aye. and I vote aye okay so we can go right into the agenda uh, approval of minutes we have none hmm. we don't we had a meeting well last month we're not listed okay What's that? Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm like, we, I don't see minutes here. <laughs> so we'll approve uh, June's minutes in the August meeting. Yeah. Committee reports. Conservation Board. That's Jason, Jason absent. Right. Sorry. Recreation. Good evening. The Recreation okay. Department submitted a report, Cecily Hall, the director, um, to let everyone know that the summer camp has gotten off to a very strong start. They kicked off on July 1st, and the camp is at capacity for all groups. There was a lot of movement between the waiting lists to try to accommodate people, and in addition, there was an up updated payment policy that has been successful in bringing in much more income ahead of time for the summer camp this year. With regard to other programming, we have upcoming events for seniors, including a tour and lunch at the Culinary Institute of America and an Elvis tribute concert at Resorts World Catskills in August. There are also a couple of spots open for the Learning Center Preschool. However, um, there are a number of families touring the school, so if anyone's interested, it's really um, timely to look at the school now and make a determination. The afternoon adventure program, unfortunately, is currently full, but there are wait lists for that program. On the buildings in Phillipstown Recreation, there has been completion of the removal of debris from the storms over the past month. And um, there's a giant pine tree that was in the preschool playground that was taken down, which had been destroyed in the storms as well. 
Phillips Town Park remains open for the season from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. daily, and the next rec commission will be a combination of both July and August meetings and will likely be, heard, would be held in early July. Judy, I know um, we had that storm that one day and they lost power and the generator failed. I went yes. down there and it had sheared apart. Do you know if it's been repaired? I, I spoke to Cecily, they had ordered the part. The generator? Yes. I believe it's been repaired, okay. I think, um, but I can confirm with Cecily. Uh, that's a, I was just yes. wondering if they had to, no. Yeah, the storms had quite an impact yeah, down at the rec center. Yeah, that really got whacked. They did, did so. yes. Yeah, uh, one other subject, I checked with Adam about digging that trench. He was waiting for uh, Erickson, I guess Erickson is out of town this week, so they're expecting to get it done within the next several weeks. And we'll get the oh, water. good, that the would water. be good. Yeah. Yeah, and the water for the pavilion in Phillips Town Park. That would be great. All righty, thank you. Phillips Town Hub. The Phillips Town Hub um, report was submitted by um, Acting Interim Executive Director Chris Owen, and um, the Hub is pleased to announce that they have now hired a permanent director, um, Ms. Semra, and if I get the name wrong, please correct me, Semra Erson. Um, has been approved by the Board of Directors of the Hub as a new full-time executive director. Um, the Hub is excited about her upcoming tenure and wanted to thank also Chris Owens for his tremendous support over the past year. The Hub is launching, um, Board had a special meeting on June 26, but they also took a look at the new expansion space, which will be eventually the home of the hub. They're still gonna keep the storefront um, in the village of Cold Spring, but the building is a lovely addition to the hub and will allow the expansion of services and services to come over to the western side of the county for um, residents, mental health and substance abuse services. The next meeting of the board of the hub is August 14th. The Hub participated in addition in the Cold Spring Community Day celebration and will be participating in the Modern Makers Market this coming Saturday. So anyone who would like additional information about the Hub, if you go to St. Mary's Lawn, there's a Modern Makers Market, they will have a table. There is um, care coordination going on constantly at the Hub. And for the month of June 2024, they engaged 330 people. Um, so they've been very busy. Since the start of the fiscal year last July, there have been 3,760 touch points, which is an average of 13 per workday for the hub. And they just wanted us to have a few examples of the type of people that are reaching out to the hub and served by the hub. Um, some have been recommended. There was a family that was recommended by their health care provider, and they're currently exploring options for a family member. Also, a hospital social worker reached out to the Hub over the past month for assistance with a patient who was being discharged, and the Hub's care coordinator was able to organize services for that participant. Another participant outside of Phillipstown reached out to the Hub when they could not find a family therapist, and the Hub was able to help them. And there is a local resident who was able to help, um, who reached out for help with someone who had isolation issues and was concerned about that person being isolated. They reached out to the hub, which was able to reach out and organize some in-person um, visitation. So the hub has been tremendously involved in both not only providing some um, services, but also coordinating services and referrals for people in Phillipstown. And even people outside of Phillipstown have called and been able to refer them to the proper agency. So we want to thank all the staff at the Hub and the interim executive director and welcome to the new executive director. We're extremely fortunate to have them. Thank you. <coughs> planning Board. Hey, I attended the Planning Board meeting on June 20th. Uh, pretty full agenda. The first of all on the agenda was a public hearing for the uh, Lake Surprise uh, Revocable Trust. They're looking to do a two-lot subdivision. Uh, at the public hearing, there was no one that spoke of the public hearing whatsoever, so the public hearing was closed, and they plan on giving it, passing a resolution next month for giving their approval of the subdivision. Uh, old business, McCaff, Carvel, 429 Sproutbrook Road, Garrison. This is a minor project. They've been through the planning board about five, six months now. Uh, the construction of a detached garage with, uh, garage with a minor driveway. 
the board is expected to adopt their approval at next month's uh, meeting as well, which is uh, July 20th or the 17th, I'm sorry. Uh, Garrison Golf Course, as you know, they've been front of the planning board several years now. Uh, they got their approvals for the resolution of their subdivision, but there's still going to be another public hearing next month regarding some steep slopes. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't included in the, the last month's meeting, so they plan on having another sleep uh, public hearing. At this public hearing, they were not only taking comments regarding the, the steep slopes themselves, they're not commenting, not taking comments from anything else that's been been reviewed so many times in the past. Next on the agenda was uh, nine Cliffs Clyde Court and Garrison is a steep slopes location there. Um, I, there was a site visit about two months or so ago. Um, so this, they discussed the site visits with the issues that they had um, the steep slopes as indicated. It was referred to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, also, Greg is writing up a letter of recommendation as well. He did also say that there's a few violations regarding this piece of property right now that need to be cleared up if they want to move forward on this in this process. Uh, also, too, I did attend the ZBA more meeting on the other night, and they did the ZBA did pass the two variances. The vote, one variance was for the driveway, and the other variance was for the, where the house was being located, since they're both on steep slopes. Now, where it goes from here. It's going to be it's anyone's question. I mean, the planning board has a lot of concerns regarding this property. Uh, we'll see what happens. And again, there's many violations on it as well. Uh, uh, Desmond Fish Library, they've been to the planning board about three or four months now. They are in the process of going through the approval construction of an open sided pavilion. And on one side is going to be closed, we're going to use for storage. They're using the storage basically when they have their book sales all the time. They can't have, the, they have so many books that, that took up all their space in their their uh, basement. So now they're going to use this space to, to, to uh, house the books before the book sales. Uh, so they will be on the agenda next month for a public hearing. Uh, last on the agenda was a KBG Properties, 201 West Point Road. They've been on and off the agenda for the last several months. This is a major site project. The applicant seeks to plan approval of construction of a 5,000 square foot uh, building to house office and, and also equipment. A landscape, a landscape company and fencing company as well. Uh, the, the, board approved, the board declared it as a major project, referred to the planning board, the board of health, and the garrison firehouse. Uh, the, right now, the board is, wants to see additional drawings and elevations. End of the meeting. The meeting was closed at 9 10. Well, thank you to the planning board. Zoning. Hi, I uh, hope everybody's enjoying their summer, staying cool. The zoning board met on July 8th. Um, the board voted to approve the variance of the public hearing, which was nine Cliffside Court Garrison, which Bob was just on about. Application is seeking a variance for a driveway within steep slopes. Um, the front yard variance for a reconstruction of a guest cottage where 60, 60 is required and 220 is proposed so the board does plan to meet in august typically they don't um, however they will be meeting on i want to say uh, the first monday in august which august 5th um, they have no new business and that was the end of the meeting thank you highway okay highway report uh presented by uh, adam hoteling superintendent of highways we're performing for the month of uh, July, of June, I'm sorry. Crews have been out very busy with all roads, grading, filling potholes, mowing, draining issues, with work being done as quickly as possible in order to keep the roads in good shape. The crews are working on completing these routine projects while also dealing with new work that seems to be coming on a daily basis. We looked out on Sunday, storm 623. There was tornado warnings, however, over time was necessary to necessary duo uh seven trees were down mostly in continental village a second storm three days later brought a power line down and thunderstorms and winds and caused more trees to be down and disrupting power as well road meadows many clo road closures down in continental village in the garrison road area as well roads were cleared quickly however just put somewhat behind our other projects for the summer the following roads have been finished with paving old highland turnpike the road was milled from Route 9 to the entrance of Graymore on the south side. Stagecoach Road, Knollwood Road, and Cross Road were all newly paved. They looked very nice. I checked them all out and did a nice job. Jeffrey Phillips was hired by as a driver on the highway department. He was a welcome addition to the crew. 
One of our new two trucks from the 2024, 2024 budget lease line was finally arrived. The truck will be an additional good uh, service to the team. FEMA issued a reimbursement of $118,357.67 from the New York severe storms and flooding in 2023. For the month of June, we approximately 20, uh, 30 phone calls and emails regarding roads and issues. Roughly spent $8,000 on equipment maintenance. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Adam. Building and land acquisition, I have nothing. Um, cemetery committee? I have nothing as well, so. Okay. Agenda. A resolution to adopt the local law to repeal residency regulations for the comptroller, and it's a roll call vote. Okay. So this was the public hearing we had earlier. Um, Kelly, you want to read through the law? To you want me to read the public hearing or the whole law? No, we can just do the, the resolution. Just go through the resolution. Okay. Um, the resolution adopting a local law to repeal the residency requirements for the office of the town comptroller. Whereas the town board of the town of Phillipstown has before it a local law entitled a local law amended the town code of the town of Phillipstown by repealing the residency requirement for the town comptroller set forth in chapter 30 Article 2, Section 30.6, and here as the town board has duly introduced and held a public hearing upon said local law. Now, therefore, be it resolved as that the town hereby adopts in said local law, and two, the local law shall be effective upon filing in the office of the Secretary of State in Albany. Thank you. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. 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 Councilwoman Farrell. I vote aye. Councilman Angel is absent. Councilman Flaherty. Aye. Councilwoman Cotter. Yes. And I vote aye. Thank you. Next is a resolution authorizing the amendment of the licensing issue agreement, um, agent agreement with the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation for decals. So this is something for the clerk's office, correct? Yes. So can I get a motion to approve the license issuing agent agreement with the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution authorizing the highway department purchase out of the New York equipment line of this uh, Skag Giant va uh, Vax Skid truck loader from Reardon, Briggs and & Law and & Gardens for $6,000. $10, and this is non pro -tunk. Motion to approve this piece of equipment out of the new equipment line, which was in the 2024 budget. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution authorizing the supervisor to submit a letter of intent for the town to participate in the New York State Pro Housing Community Program. Okay, I, I kind of thought that Nat would be here tonight to give us some more explanation on this. I know our, the town attorney did provide us with a description of it. <laughs> I, I just have a few questions. Okay. Um, a little bit more detail um, regarding what this pro housing is. Like, what, what, who is it for? Is it for like, is it for seniors or what? What does it entail? I'm sure you recall what happened was two years ago, maybe the governor included in her budget a provision which would have required municipalities that have uh, Metro North um, stations in them up and down the Hudson to include and, and on Long Island to uh, include in their zoning um, provisions for a certain amount of residential development. And if they did not meet the goals that were set in her proposal in her, in her budget then developers would be able to apply to the state to Correct. supersede the zoning of local yes. towns and villages etc which did not go over very well and she eventually backed off of that so instead of using you should pardon the analogy but the, the stick yeah. she's decided the people in albany have decided that they're going to use the carrot to get municipalities to um, work toward uh, providing more housing and increasing the, the stock of housing in, in, in their municipalities. 
So um, there are a number of different grants, the New York FAST grant. Um, it's not WIA grants, but there's like seven of them. They're discretionary grants that the state gives out. And if you become a, a pro-housing community, you get priority if you submit for those grants. Now this year, those are the only ones involved. In subsequent years, it may become more, but I mean, that's the future, you can't say. The point is that um, if you decide to apply for one of these, there's seven or eight of them, grants, um, it behooves you to become a pro-housing community because it gives you a leg up on everybody else. And a number of municipalities are taking advantage of this. Now there's two ways you can become a pro-housing community. The first way is that if the number of building permits that you have issued um, over, I think it's three years, um, equals a certain percentage of your overall housing, if you, you grow by like 5%, I, there's a different standard for downstate communities and upstate communities. I'm, I, I'm quite certain you'd be an upstate community, which right. is a lower it's standard. Like but, um, then you automatically qualify as a pro-housing community. You don't have to do a blessed thing. But if you don't have numbers to meet that standard, you can still become a pro-housing community if you adopt a resolution called the pro-housing pledge. Now the pro-housing, there, there is no pro-housing pledge. The state never put together a document that you, what they did do is put together a draft resolution which um, states a number of, of aspirations in terms of creating new housing, providing affordable housing and, and, and like that. It does not compel a municipality to change its zoning, it doesn't compel a municipality to change its comprehensive plan, it doesn't trump your zoning, it doesn't trump your comprehensive plan. The only concern that I have with adopting, and you wouldn't adopt it yet, you gotta go through John submitting the, right. the letter of intent and then they'll upload all of your, uh, they have, probably have a lot of it already, the building department provides it to the, for the census, but anyway, they'll upload that and they'll tell you if you qualify and then if you don't qualify, it'll come back for the, the resolution. Uh, but if you do adopt it and you subsequently decide that you want to adopt zoning, which deviates to some extent from that, let's say that you want to make a certain area of town lower density housing, you want to make it you know, bigger lots, smaller number of units, you could still do it. But when you do it, you're going to want to have uh, an affidavit or a memo or something in your file saying, all right, listen, this is why we're changing this zoning so that it, it results in, as it turns out, potentially less housing units for the town. And it's because, well, there's environmental concerns and maybe drainage, maybe steep slopes, maybe a lot of yeah. different things. I mean, there's a lot that goes. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah no, and <laughs> Phillips Town's got all of it as far as that goes. I'm like, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it just make sure that if you're going to, that's the only concern I have. If you're going to make zoning changes after you adopt, if you adopt, after you adopt the, uh, the, um, the um, pro-housing pledge resolution, that you make a good record before you make any zoning changes that might be deemed contrary to it. Because you don't want somebody coming in and challenging it and saying, hey, wait a minute, this is part of your land use policy. This zoning change is contrary to it. There's no explanation for it. But if you paper it, you're going to be fine. A lot of the 2010 zoning changes did promote more housing, accessory apartments, uh, different communities, increasing density in some areas. So you, I you think have a very thorough comprehensive plan. Right. I, I can't think of once that this board has adopted a zoning change without going through you know extensive vetting of it and right. and you know hearing from your uh, consultants and taking public comment. I, I just don't think it's going to be a problem for Phillipstown. But that's the one caveat I would have. If you do it, just keep that in the back of your mind. But that aside, there's really no risk here. Okay. Okay. I have a lot of other questions, but I'll save them for when Nat's here. Because <laughs> they're all going. I don't think I can make that answer. Okay. So can I get a resolution authorizing me to submit a letter of intent to the town to participate in the New York Pro Housing Communities Program? So Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. And I vote aye. Next is a resolution authorizing the supervisor to submit a letter of support in regards to a grant for flood resilience planning with the village of Cold Spring and Nelsonville. So, um, Judy, would you like to speak about this? You would sure. Okay. Um, the town of Phillipstown, as you know, almost a little over a year ago, July was hit 9th. July 9th yeah. with the terrible storm that resulted in significant flooding in our town and really had a devastating impact on residents and businesses and infrastructure in the villages of Cold Spring and Nelsonville. And the village of Cold Spring has taken the lead in looking for funding 
for a grant to plan for the future to prevent this kind of flooding or to prepare for it in some way and um, has proposed a planning grant that is available from New York State's Hudson River Programs estuary program. Um, and we have, the town of Phillipstown would like to collaborate with the villages of Cold Spring and Nelsonville and support them in this effort to plan and prepare for the future because as we've even seen this summer, there have been a number of storms. Um, and I was on a site visit with both the mayors, mayors Foley and Winward, and um, a consultant who is working with the group. And there are so many sites that are vulnerable in our community, and we really do need more planning for the future in this regard. So I think this grant will result in an assessment that would be very helpful as we do that planning. Thank you. I, I fully support it. Um, we were all well aware of the flooding and the mess that happened not only on July 9th, but there was a subsequent storm. I think it was in October, we pumped again. We still have pumps in place. And if you look at the weather for Friday night into Saturday, I wouldn't doubt if we're pumping again. So there are some major infrastructure issues really that affect the village of Cold Spring. If you look at Phillipstown, it's just a funnel and the water comes off the mountain. It comes off of um, you know, Bull Hill plus the Lane Gate side and it all just funnels right down into the two villages. The, uh, the piping is hundreds of years old that's so underneath the village, and it just becomes overwhelmed. I was talking to uh, Bugsy, the highway superintendent for the village of Cold Spring. There's so much pressure going down Main Street when they have a storm like that. They have to park a truck on top of one of the manholes or it shoots it up out of the, out of the road. So it's interesting, and um, it's time. It's time it needs to be reworked, and these, are, these grants are available, and I fully support uh, basically, the, the villages are the hub of the community, and we and we need them to be uh, resilient. So I fully support the the grant application. Anyone? No, definitely not. I support it as well. Okay. Can I get a motion authorizing me to sign a letter of support in regard to the grant for flood resilience planning with the village of Cold Spring and Nelsonville? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Okay. Next is scheduling workshops. Okay, so we have our monthly meeting on August 1, 2024, and then Martha Upton, Climate Smart, NYSERDA grant information either for 717 or 731. I, I would prefer the 31st, actually, if that's if that worked for Martha. The 31st, July 31st. Does that work for you guys? 731? Yeah. Yes. Just check, make sure. That's a Wednesday, right? Yeah, so we'll be here two nights in two a row. Nights, so right. it's Wednesday, and then yeah, we're here back, first, which right. is fine. Yeah. Good, no problem. Okay. All right. So Martha's got for the 31st. <clears throat> Next is the code enforcement monthly report. Fees collected $23,600.80. Total number of permits issued, 22. New commercial and industrial buildings, one. Uh, additional alterations or repairs, um, two. All other permits, 19. Number of COs, 27. Number of stop work orders was two. Inspection on public assembly, four. Inspection of commercial occupancies, one. And most pools are open now. Please take time to service all safety features. Yes, my, my thanks to Greg Warner. I did um, speak with Jacqueline and Abby, who is the supervisor of Putnam Valley, and they're in the same situation we are. They cannot find a part-time uh, building inspector. They've been looking. So we're going to meet uh, in August to try to um, connect our two building inspectors. So if their guy is away on vacation, we can cover them and vice versa. They could also cover each other. You know, if they, they do get called out for fires or, you know, collapses of buildings at all hours on weekends, so they could share that service as well. I'm also going to um, consider somehow collaborating with an intermunicipal agreement so we can maybe hire one additional full-time person and have them float between us and Putt Valley. But So I'm meeting with the supervisor of Putnam Valley. I believe it's August 5th. So. Well, you guys, you know, we hired Jeff. To it's clerical a end of it. clerical right. end part. Yeah. He's only right. working 10 hours a week. Yeah. Jeff used to be the town clerk in the village, so yes. 
he used to help out with the building but anyway so he's here working 20 yeah. hours 10 yeah. hours a week to help a little, a little bit yeah, it takes some of the clerical load off yeah. of Greg. So, yes so my thanks to greg warner any other business before the town board? Um, I just attended a meeting at Putnam County Legislature of the Rules Committee. Um, I'd like to thank County Executive Kevin Byrne and his staff, as well as the county legislature. Um, they reappropriated our ARPA funds. They're going to do a, um, an ARPA-approved project within the town of Phillipstown, and they're also um, applying 50% of what our ARPA money would have been that can go directly into our um, general fund, which really is better for us than the ARPA money because there's no restrictions. We can apply it towards the water at the garrison landing. So that'll help us tremendously. And they also, we've executed the IMA for the sales tax sharing. Um, it's fully executed, so I can contact um, Ron Gaynor tomorrow and we can start the process of connecting the well finally to the garrison landing. So Great. my appreciation to the, the county. Uh, Nancy uh, Montgomery, our county legislator, was also involved and assisted with the process. So thank you to Putnam County. Good. It took some time, but we got it. So that's we did. Okay. Yes, we did. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'd just like to recognize uh, Doug Logan, who was a resident of Phillipstown for the last 94 years, passed away. He had uh, Doug Logan, well, George Logan and Sons, uh, uh, headstone business that's been in business for 134 years, the oldest business in the town of Phillips. So I just want to recognize Doug. I used to work for him, but he was a great guy, and just you know, just want to let people know that uh, you know, get, uh, condolences to his family. That's all. He was so. the helmet. He was the quarterback. He was the quarterback for the Blue Devils. Yep. <laughs> Anything else in the board? No. Oh, also too, I. Uh, Gave all the information to Martha, our, our, our climate smart person, for the uh, highway garage. She had additional some questions. She got back to me the other day. I re reached out to my contact with New York Solar, and he answered me right away. So uh, hopefully in, in the next few months we'll be in the process of doing RFP to get uh, solar on that, on that roof as well. Thank you, Bob. Judy? That would be great. No, no. I have nothing further. Audience, call on the audience. Yeah, you just come right up to the mic. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Lorraine Cipriano. Um, I live on Laurel Terrace in uh, Continental Village, which is a private road. And uh, the Continental Water District is one of our neighbors. Um, I'm calling to ask, the, I came here to ask the board if they would be um, willing to assist us with our snow plowing. Um, we used to have Tom, who was great, and only charged us $90 for the first swipe and 75 for the second. Tom has now retired, and the cheapest snowplower that we were able to find is $250, and then $200 for the second swipe. So this winter, um, we uh, paid out $1,100 for snow plowing for the storms and a little salt that he did put on the road. Um, so with the seven houses and if the continent, if we could include the Continental Village Fire District, that would be $137 uh, a neighbor. Uh, I'm confused. Which, which road? It's where the it's Continental Village Water Department? Where the, where the water tower is. Where the water tower is. Yeah, so we live on Aqueduct Road, if you come all the way down, with a third left. And the water tower is on our street. Why don't I? I'll come down and meet with you guys and take a look. I'll get Ralph Bassignani to go up and take a look. I, I, I'm not totally familiar with the situation, but I'd be happy to come down and we'll okay. uh, and we'll take a look at it and we'll go from there. All right, that'd if be it, wonderful. If we're one of your neighbors, we will participate. Okay. I guarantee. You said it's a private road, though. It is. Right. Okay. Right. So we we the town would not but, be able to plow it, but right. if we. Oh yeah, yeah. If we, we know are, that. If we are a participant in that road then i would assume we'd be able to assist you with with the you know our portion of whatever it is okay yeah. okay so um if you can call my office we'll set up a meeting and um i'll come down or bobby will come down and we'll take a look with ralph so okay thank you so oh, much. that's so wonderful thank you so thank much you. <clears throat> anything else from the audience richard you got to have something no. 
You just came to say hello? I can't afford Taylor Swift tickets. <laughs> 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 well, isn't, isn't she over in England? It doesn't matter. It's still very pricey, Bob. Oh, well, I'm okay? sure it is. <laughs> well, you were waving at me. See, what? Oh, sorry. My bad. Oh, sorry. The 12th. I'm getting the summer, you know, the heat. Give me, give me a break here. Meg will be here it's to help you with the camera. Yeah, you don't want that. You don't want that. Nothing else in the audience. Vacancies, we have one opening on the board assessment review. We had a lot of people interested in assessments. We should have somebody who wanted to be on the board of assessment review. That would be a perfect use of that um, trait. Too much work. Yeah, yeah. It's easy to complain, but nobody wants to get involved. But. Approval of vouchers, general. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Highway? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Continental Village Park District? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Continental Village Water District? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Thank you all. Thank you.